Hello everyone. Good day. Welcome to vSparks. Today we are going to see the fundamentals of networking which is required for understanding Kubernetes networking. If you like this video, please subscribe to vSparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. We are going to discuss on these topics in this video. Let us start from the scratch. What is a network? In computing, two or more devices connected together for their communication forms a network. To share information between computers or devices, we need a network. A network can be of wired or wireless. This is a typical network which is having minimal devices or setup. Let us see how a complex network looks like. A complex network. As we can see, this network is composed of wired devices as well as wireless devices. Some of the devices you can see in this picture are hubs, bridges, switches, gateways, wired routers, wireless routers, firewalls and so on. These network devices all together collectively forms a network. Each of the devices has its own functionalities. Let us discuss about these components one by one. Network Hub A hub is a layer 1 device as per the OSI reference model, that is the physical layer. Hub is the very basic network device as it has very less intelligence compared to switches and routers. These hubs will simply broadcast all the network data to all its paired connections just like this. As we can see the data received by the hub is simply broadcasted to all the devices connected to it. Network switch A switch is a network device which connects devices within a local network and forward the data to and from those devices. Here, the local network is often referred as LAN, that is local area network. A network switch can operate at either OSI layer number 2 or OSI layer number 3. A layer 2 switch can forward data based on the destination MAC address, while the layer 3 switch forwards the data based on the destination IP address. A switch only sends data to a single device it is intended for and it will not broadcast data to all the devices as like a hub. Network Router Routers are the devices that forwards packets between different networks. Usually routers operate at OSI layer number 3 that is network layer. It can be used in both local area networks as well as in wide area networks. If we recall the last slide, a network switch will send data packets only within the same network whereas a router forwards data packets between different networks. Same logic is depicted in this picture. Network Gateway A gateway is a device or a node that connects two different networks operating with different transmission protocols. Based on the operating mode, it can operate at any of the OSI layers, but usually layer number 3. Just like a door of a house, it acts as the entry or the exit point for a network. All the traffic flows across the networks should pass through the gateway. A simple representation of a gateway in a network is shown in this picture. Network Bridge A bridge is a device that connects two different LAN segments into one. Bridges operates at OSI layer number 2 
that is data link layer. What does Bridges do? It simply inspects the incoming traffic from one side and forwards the same to the other side, just like this. Bridges lacks the intelligence of network routers. Bridges offer substantial improvements over the network hubs, but it is not widely used anymore in the modern lands. Network Firewall A firewall is a security device that is used to prevent or mitigate unauthorized access to private networks by using firewall policies. Network firewalls are located at the network's front line and they are the first line of defense. IP Addressing what is a IP address? IP addresses are used to identify a device in a network just like our name. It is broadly classified into IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. IPv6 is out of scope for this video. IPv4 addresses is composed of 32 bits and it is expressed in DDN format that is dotted decimal notation. IPv4 Addresses consist of four decimal numbers. Each number represents 8-bit binary digit. An example of IPv4 address is shown in this picture. Here 172.16.254.1 is an IP address. IP classes Based on the ranges, IP addresses are broadly classified into five classes that is class A, class B, class C, class D and class E. The ranges of each classes are depicted in this table. Class A range is 0.0.0.0 to 127.255.255.255. Similarly, other classes also have their own ranges. From the table, we can see class A network can hold up to 2 power 24 IP addresses. Similarly, class B network around 2 power 16 IP addresses, class C network around 2 power 8 IP addresses. This is purely based on the host portion that is allocated for these classes. For example, for class A, the host portion is having 24 bits and so the available IP addresses are around 2 power 24. This is around 1 crore 67 lakh 77,216 IP addresses. Class D is allocated for multicasting and class E is reserved for future purposes. Based on the usage, IP addresses are classified into public and private addresses. Internet routable addresses are called as public addresses, whereas intranet routable addresses are called as private addresses. The following table shows the ranges for private addressing space with its network masks and prefix length. Let us see the drawbacks of this traditional IP addressing system. This traditional mode of IP addressing came up with inefficiencies that has exhausted the availability of IPv4 addresses more faster. Also, the number of hosts in the classful system will never change as the prefix length is fixed here. In other words, it has the fixed length subnet masks. For example, if an organization requires a network that can hold 20 lakh IPs, the organization should use or buy Class A license. Since Class B cannot hold up to 20 lakh IP addresses. In this scenario, we are almost wasting 14 crores of IP addresses by holding a Class A license. To overcome this problem, CIDR was introduced.
what is CIDR? CIDR stands for Classless Interdomain Routing. CIDR is based on the variable length subnet masking and it allows us to define the prefixes of variable length making it much more efficient than the old system. For example, as per the old system, for class A addresses, the prefix length must be slash 8. But now, as per the new CIDR based system, we can change the prefix length as per our network requirements. Prefix length is not fixed anymore with the help of CIDR. CIDR based IP addresses are written with a prefix and a suffix. Prefix defines the network itself, whereas the suffix defines the network portion and the host portion. An example is shown below. Next is subnetting. What is subnetting? Subnetting is the practice of dividing a network into multiple smaller networks. This method increases the network's routing efficiency, enhances security and it reduces the size of a broadcast domain as well. Consider this network that is 172.19.0.0 without subnetting. Here we can see the machines that belongs to test environment as well as the production environment. All the machines are connected to a single switch or a single domain of a network. This network is having only few machines but consider a real time scenario where hundreds and thousands of machines will be connected all together where management and routing is too complex in a single network. A typical network with subnetting. Now consider this picture where the same network is divided into two pieces called subnets. This is our testing subnet and this is our production subnet. This reduces the complexity and management in this network. Now how to do subnetting? Let us discuss the same in the next slides. How to do subnetting? Let us take the same network range which we have seen in the last slide that is 172.19.0.0 slash 16. The first step is to identify the network portion and the host portion in the given network IP range. This slash 16 in this network range tells us that the first 16 bits are reserved for network portion. and the remaining bits are for the host portion. Subnetting should be done only in the host portion. So we are going to use host portion for dividing this big network. Let us continue the same in the next slide. Let us take the same network range that is 172.90.0.0 slash 16. There is an important rule here which we must follow while doing subnetting. That is the network portion cannot be used for subnetting. As a first step, we need to decide upon how many subnets we need to create in this network. This decision is fully dependent on our business requirements. For this case, let us consider the number of subnets we need is Second, we need to identify the X number of bits to be used for doing subnetting. To find out that we have an equation. 2 power of what is closer to the number of subnets needed. The required number of subnets is 2. Substitute everything in this equation and find out what is X. As per this example, the value of X is going to be 1. As we already know, we cannot touch the network portion. In this case, the first 16 bits. So we are going to freeze the 17th bit for doing the subnetting as the X value is 1. In this 17th bit, we can have either 0 or 1 as the permutational combinational values. 
substitute all the possible values in the priest bids. In the 17th bit, mark as 0 and write down all the other values as same as that of the network values. Finally, convert the binary digits to decimal values and this constitute our subnet number 1 which is 172.19.0.0/17. With respect to subnet, now the CIDR value is slash 17 that includes our freest bit as well. Similarly, mark as 1 and write down all the other values that constitute our subnet number 2 which is going to be 172.19.128.0/17 After subnetting we have 15 more bits remaining in the first portion This means in each subnet 2 power 15 IP addresses are available which is around 32000 IP addresses Let us see how the network looks like with our example we have a network of range 172.19.0.0/16 which is subdivided into two subnets having ranges 172.19.0.0/17 and 172.19.128.0/17 Now let us do the same exercise for the same network range but this time the required number of subnets is going to be 6. With this requirement the value for x is going to be 3. To power 3 is equal to 8 which is closer to 6 subnets. So the value of x is going to be 3. Now freeze 3 bits in the host portion which is 17, 18 and 19th bits because the x value is 3 and so we are freezing 3 bits. Substitute all the permutational combinational values in the freezed bits. Then convert all the binaries into decimal values and finally you can see all the valid subnets for our network. Here the network CIDR range is slash 16 and the subnet CIDR range is slash 19 that is including the freezed bits. In each subnets 2 power 13 IPs are available which is around 8k IP addresses are available. This is how our network looks like with our second subnetting example. Now let us see some of the basic concepts of DNS. What is DNS? DNS stands for domain name space or domain name system which is used to decode a name into an IP address and vice versa. Every device in a network has its own IP address which is used by others for communication. As a human it is not possible to memorize all the IP addresses of the devices. To solve this problem, DNS comes into picture. DNS servers makes it possible to input normal words for communication without having to keep track of the IP addresses for every machine. DNS acts like a phone book to map name into IP addresses and vice versa. These names are called as domain names. Let us see an example on how DNS works. Whenever a client, let's say client A, wants to reach a web server having a name www.vsparks.com, it will post the request to the DNS server. DNS server reply back with a response having the IP addresses of that web server. With that IP addresses, client A can reach to the web server. In the same way, other clients can also reach to the destination with the help of DNS servers. What is a proxy? 
A proxy is a server machine that accepts incoming requests from a client machine and forwards those requests to the destination server. Proxy server basically acts like a middleman that intercepts the client's request and communicates the same to the destination on behalf of those clients. Important point to consider here is proxy server does not encrypt the traffic. Now, what are the benefits of using a proxy? It improves security, protects us from the attackers and malwares. It helps to block restricted contents. It also helps in load balancing and caching. Now, let us see the major types of proxy and how it works. Forward proxy. A forward proxy often called as proxy server or a web proxy server that sits in front of a group of client machines. When those computers makes requests to websites on the network, the proxy server intercepts those requests and then communicates with the web servers on behalf of those clients just like a middleman. Reverse proxy a reverse proxy is a server that sits in front of one or more web servers intercepting the request from the clients. This reverse proxy mainly helps in load balancing, caching and protects the servers from attacks. Well, that's it for this lecture. This is the summary that we have discussed so far in this video. Thank you from vSparks and thank you for watching this video.